Hello everyone and welcome to Nintendo Lounge with our first ever discussion here on YouTube. I'm Scott and joining me is... Jimmy, hi. Hello. So 2017 is coming to an end. It's been a pretty wild year. A lot of ha has happened. Uh, Donald Trump as president. Uh, what else has happened in 2017, Jim? Uh, just a, a lot of garbage. Just, just a whole lot of garbage has happened. But for the gaming part of things, things are pretty okay. Things are, yeah. things are decent. <laughs> I'd say 2017 has been a pretty good year for video games, and a very good year for Nintendo, that is. Uh, after the failure of the Wii U, which I don't like to say because I was a massive fan of the Wii U, uh, I believe it's a superiorly underrated system, a lot of great gems on there, but after that commercial failure, the Switch is here, and it's pretty successful. But starting off at the beginning of 2017, how did you think things would go for Nintendo? Look, um, honestly, like, because my opinion on the on the uh, the Wii U, um, I never owned one because I never saw the appeal of it. And honestly, when it was first advertised, I kind of saw it as kind of like a a Wii peripheral kind of thing. Like, I thought it was just like a part of the Wii. I didn't really quite understand it, and I feel like that was how the majority of people kind of saw it. Because um, I obviously at that time I didn't really look into it too much. So then when the, at the time it was the, it was called the NX, that was kind of its like production title or whatever you may call it. Um, and at first I was like, okay, I feel like that's probably going to be a hybrid console. And I think a lot of people seem to agree was kind of like the general consensus that it was a hybrid, like handheld slash regular console. So I thought that it'd be that, it'd be like that too. And lo and behold, it was. What a good prediction. Wow. wow. Amazing. <laughs> Um, but going into this year, we, we were all wondering, was the Switch going to be a success or will it be like the end of Nintendo? Because a lot of people were very 50-50 on it. Yeah. You had lots of people saying, this is it for Nintendo, they're doomed. Right, yeah. They're never coming back. Exactly. Just, just give up, just be a third party for PS4 and Xbox and One. That, that's, that's actually how I felt as well. Like at the beginning of the year, I was very much sold on the idea of being like, they should be a third-party developer for other consoles. They'd benefit so much because their consoles don't sell as well as they used to and they rely too much on this weird gimmick hardware thing. And it was just kind of like a weird thing they were going through, especially with the Wii, but the Wii was like a massive success. Uh, and obviously the Wii U didn't go as well. So I was like, they should probably develop just games. Like that's, that's, that's what they're the best at. And I didn't really think that they could pull it through with a console, but um, I guess I was wrong. <laughs> Indeed. And going into 2017, we didn't have to wait long uh, until we got some news on the Nintendo Switch. Right. And we had the January event, uh, which was about Jan January 23rd, I believe, uh, <laughs> where they showed off the Nintendo Switch and all the games, what it would be, what's coming, and all that kind of stuff. And a lot of people went into this very, very afraid, because uh, it'd be like the make it or end it for mm, Nintendo. Exactly. And at first, a lot of people were a bit confused. They weren't sure how it would go for Nintendo because, we've got to admit, that January event, for Eng uh, English-speaking countries at least, was a bit cringy. You had a lot of terrible translators. Yeah. No. Which didn't oh, really... yeah. Was it the... Um, what was it? The... Uh, the the Travis... What's the game again? Travis, Travis Touchdown. Yeah, that character. was... That was incredibly... It was incredible. I'm just gonna say it's incredible. It was an incredible moment. You also had a number of games which didn't have any release dates. They weren't gonna be coming out until the later half of 2017. Yeah. And everyone was like, "Where are the, the launch games? Why? Why should I get this console on launch?" Right. And yeah. everyone was a bit, a bit wary there. Uh, and then they showed off Legend of Zelda: Breath of the Wild once again. And then everyone as a <laughs> launch title. Everyone. And then as immediately everyone saw that they were like, "Okay, yeah, I'm kind of sold." Um. What did you What did you think of the actual like event itself? Like, aside from everyone else's perspective, like, what did you think? Like, after the event actually finished, like, what was your main uh, thoughts on it? I after the uh, the main event, I was a bit confused. I enjoyed it, gotcha, yeah. but I was a bit underwhelmed as well because mm. I thought they'd be coming out super strong with like heaps and heaps of games to come out at launch. Um, but then after the event happened. Uh, Nintendo put out this image of like all the games that were coming out at launch. Right. And it was like four games. It was Legend of Zelda. It was Bomberman R. It was um, Just Dance. Mm. And you're sort of like, is that is that is that it? Sort of thing. Yeah. Um, 
And there was lots of good games shown off that really excited me, like uh, Super Mario Odyssey. Mm. You had ARMS, which sort of piqued my interest. It was, it was, was, yeah, it was a about? Weird, yeah, ARMS was a weird curious, one. It was kind yeah. of like, yeah, it was kind of like a weird, colorful, kind of Splatoon-like thing. And I was like, this is kind of weird, but it's imaginative, so it looked kind of cool, I guess. Um, but then you had disappointments, like when Sega came on stage. And if you know me, you know I'm a massive Sega fan. Mm. And they came on stage. I was like, oh my god, is Sega going to announce something massive and super cool here? And all their presence there was just them saying, yeah, I really like the uh, the idea of the Switch. <laughs> and then they just walked off the stage. Wasn't, I was like... Wasn't that Activision's thing too? They came on... No, it was EA. EA came on. They're like, yeah, we're going to we're gonna do some Switch things too. Stay tuned. And they just kind of left. It was like... Oh, well, they actually announced the game. They announced FIFA. Oh, okay. It might have been Activision then. There was, there was a couple of companies that just did that kind of thing where they come on and they're like... Yeah, we're doing games. See ya. <laughs> it was just kind of like, you could have just shown like a, a like a, a JPEG image on the screen. Be like, these are all the developers working for us. Hello. But I guess maybe mm-hmm. they wanted them to be there or something. I don't know. But um, speaking of like uh, launch titles, I actually bought up the PS4 and Xbox One launch titles. Just kind of like go through those. It's, it's kind of a comparison because I know people talked about Nintendo being disappointing. And I just want to like quickly skim through these because for Xbox One you had Rise, which is like a weird Rome one. You had games like bloody Madden, Zoo Tycoon, Killer Instinct, uh, Assassin's Creed 4, which was a port, Call of Duty Ghosts. Uh, there's nothing really here that kind of shines as anything amazing. And PS4 is kind of the same, like FIFA 14, Madden 25. Lego Marvel Super Heroes, Assassin's Creed Black Flag again, Call of Duty Ghosts, Killzone, Need for Speed Rivals, Skylanders, Swap Force, like there's nothing there. The only thing that's there that is like a new new IP PS4 title is Knack. That is all. Classic Knack. Yeah, that's, that's the thing. It's like Nintendo, their launch was actually not that bad in comparison. I think that it was a really solid launch. It's just like they didn't have as many but the quality was there, and that's my thing about it, is that I thought the quality was there, just maybe not the numbers, but I think it was more worthwhile, because, for instance, I bought the Switch, I guess we'll talk about that later, but I bought the Switch, like, the year that it came out, as opposed to PS4, I bought that, like, three years later, because obviously I was waiting for games to get better, so I think that says that it's a good launch, so anyway, I guess we'll talk about that a little bit more later. But overall, the January presentation, well, good, it had more to be desired to yep. uh, for people who weren't diehard Nintendo fans mm. a lot of people kind of like okay uh, I remember watching several YouTube videos right. uh, reactions where they're like is that, is that all the games you're showing off there Yeah. Uh, but then of course you have people who were super excited for it it was sort of a it was a weird one you either liked it or you were a bit disappointed by it yeah and I mean for me because I hadn't owned a, con- a, a Nintendo console for like a really long time so for me, I was just kind of generally interested in it. I didn't even know I would actually buy a Switch that year. Like, I didn't know I would. So I was kind of just like, I liked it. Like, it surprised me. I didn't I didn't expect to see anything there that I would actually be keen for. And I saw Zelda, I saw Mario Odyssey, and I saw a lot of games that actually sparked my interest. So it, for me, I think I really enjoyed it, actually. And before we go on a bit more into detail when the Switch came out mm. and all that, we just quickly go over what uh, Nintendo also had for us in 2017. Yes. And one of the weird ones which Nintendo's found a lot of success with yeah. is with the classic mini consoles they've been releasing. And this year, they released the SNES Mini. Yep. Uh, <laughs> this was released to a lot of hype because the NES Mini came out uh, with about four consoles being shipped out. Yep. And everyone going crazy to try to find it, uh, going up on eBay for a ridiculous amount of money. And I think it was because of the scarcity of the NES Mini that it created so much hype for this new one. Yep. And it made a lot of people go out, get it day one, uh, which I did. Um, <laughs> and they'd hoped that they would make a quick buck on, YouTube, uh, on um, eBay. However, it doesn't seem to be the case this time around as Nintendo made quite a few more. Uh, yeah, uh, literally the target that's near where I work actually just has like 600 of these SNES minis just lying around. And that just shows you how many of them they actually made. It's kind of ridiculous. And with the high production numbers of the uh, the new SNES mini, uh, it's now going over to the NES mini and they're going to be uh, producing more of those oh, uh, sometime next year. I did not know so, that. <laughs> that's a big middle finger to everyone who... Uh, 
try to sculpt yeah, it on eBay. Try to sell it for like two grand. Screw exactly. you guys. <laughs> but even though I do have an SES Mini, I still haven't actually played it. I haven't got any time to get around to playing any of the yeah. games. But I'm looking forward to it. Um, I'm looking forward to playing Star Fox 2, which was very cool of Nintendo yeah. to do that. No, they could have just put up a compilation of games that everyone knows and loves, but they decided to finish off a cancelled video game mm. and release that. Yeah, is there any games on the list that's that's on there that you haven't played before that you're actually keen to play now that you've got the SNES? Or? Uh, quite a few, actually. <laughs> okay. There's quite a few like RPG games which I've never played, right. which I'm looking forward to. Um, with SNES games, I've sort of like dipped my toes into them, but I never yep. like properly played them. That's how. So, for example, like Super Mario World yep. or something like that, I'll just play it for like five minutes, and I'll be like, "Oh, that's pretty cool," and then just not touch it again for a while, and then before getting back to it. Same with like Super Metroid and that kind of thing. Yeah, absolutely. I I have the same thing. Like I I dip my toes in. I link to the past. I played a lot of Super Mario World like a long time ago, um, and. Oh yeah, like Mega Man X. I found that game ridiculously hard, so I kind of gave up. Uh, and also, yeah, Metroid. Uh, Me sorry, Super Metroid. You actually can't go wrong with that one. Like, it's a really good game. And I believe that's all we have to say on the SNS Mini. It's yeah. there's not much to say about it, but it's it's interesting that Nintendo's doing this. And we'll have to wait and see if in 2018 they're going to release a Nintendo 64. That Mini. would be cool. I would be keen for that. Like, even though I've got a Nintendo 64, I'd, like, kind of want it. But I'd, I'd, I'd know. i know. i got to stop myself. But also, at the same time, I kind of want it. So, I don't know. Ugh. Anyway. Anyway, on. we have one more console to talk about before moving on to mm -hmm. the Nintendo Switch. And that is the Nintendo 3DS. Mm. Which, when it originally released, was not the biggest success. And it had a bit of trouble finding sales before they brought the price down. And then, all of a sudden, it was a massive success. Yep. Uh, it's a shame that never happened to the Wii U, but it's still a success to this day, even with the Switch out, which is a portable console. Um, Nintendo is still firmly believing in the 3DS, keeping that going. A lot of people in the gaming world like to say that the 3DS should die, that the Switch should just completely take it over. Yeah. But I feel like the 3DS has a market for younger children, people Absolutely. who don't have as much money to yeah. buy a Nintendo Switch. No, it was because um, I, since I work at a game retailer, like I... Every single day, there's someone that actually buys a 3DS or someone that asks this question about the 3DS. Um, so there's definitely a market and it's always like parents buying it for their kids or whatever it may be. Um, so there's definitely a market for it. And like, obviously parents don't want to, you know, put in like nearly $500 towards the Switch sometimes. So obviously, yeah, a 3DS or a 2DS XL is a great thing to actually put your money towards. Like, I totally see why it's still a thing. But that being said... I sold mine earlier this year when the Switch actually came out. I actually put the money towards my Switch. So that kind of shows you my loyalty to the 3DS, actually. But it's still successful, and I still think it deserves to, to live on at least maybe another year or two. Like, I, I still believe in it. <laughs> mm. And there were quite a few big uh, launches for the 3DS this year. We had uh, such games as Pokemon Ultra Sun and Ultra Moon, which just recently came out. Hmm. Uh, I am yet to play it, but I've heard good things about it. I've heard it's better than the... Uh, Original Sun and Moon games. Yeah, I mean that's kind um, that's kind of a given. It's kind of like a platinum scenario where basically it's just a remake of those games, just updated a little bit. And obviously, it is going to be better. But I just didn't. I that's the re that, and that's the reason I, I actually sold my 3ds. I was like, no, I don't want to buy the same game again. So I just kind of rebelled a little bit. I'm I'm rebellious like that, guys. Uh, we had games such as Hey Pikmin, which was a three uh, a two D Pikmin mm. game, which didn't really catch my attention, but right. um, other other people enjoyed it. Uh, we had games such as uh, Metroid: Samus Returns, which yeah. is a game I want to pick up eventually. Yeah, it kind of sucks because I actually do want to play that one. It kind of sucks. <laughs> I sold it. Ugh. It's a shame you sold your 3DS for that. Right, but it's okay because there's certain games coming out that is coming up for the Switch, but we'll not talk about that one. But yeah, 3DS, it will probably stick around for another two years or so, I reckon. Yeah, no, um, it's, it's, it's going to be solid for a little bit, but yeah. Smaller games, I feel. Not such massive games. Absolutely. Uh, lower budget, uh, lower price games. Yep. And then we'll slowly see it fade out. And just be replaced by the Switch, which is already happening with Pokemon. Mm. You had Ultra Sun and Ultra Moon, final, maybe final 3DS games, and then I, I, moving over I to the Switch. I would believe so. That kind of makes sense to me. I hope they are the final ones, because I want them to devote so much more time into the Switch ones. But that's another story. That's another discussion. <laughs> that's another story for another time. But 
let's move on to the main topic itself. Yes. Nintendo's big, big breakthrough of 2017, and that is the Nintendo Switch. Mm. And we're going to start off with the launch of it. Now, we already said earlier that the launch date, uh, the launch titles didn't look all that great uh, in terms of numbers. Yeah, but no, quality-wise, um, it was really good. <laughs> indeed, quant- uh, quality over quantity. That's, that's the is best what way to go about it, did. Yeah. And um, so I picked up my Nintendo Switch day one. Mm. I went to my EB Games at about 6.40 in the morning. Excellent. Because uh, where I live, for some reason, they don't do midnight uh, launches. you got to wait until the morning. That's usually the thing, though. Like, yeah, um, stores over here that don't do it midnight either. It's just kind of a situation. Usually it's over East, they do that. <laughs> yeah. Um, so I got there super early. I was the first one there. I was like, yes. Oh, wow. First one to get my Switch here. Uh, and then we were escorted up to the to the uh, the EB Games because it was a bit further into the store and they wouldn't open that part of the store until uh, a certain time. So they escort us there, and the security guy was like, "Okay, this guy was first, so make sure you're first. But as we get to EB Games, there's already two guys lining up who found a back entrance into the store. What scumbags! <laughs> I know. So I was a bit disappointed there. I was sort of like, "Kind of, you stole my you stole my moment there." So I feel like. Morally, I was there first. But le- but legally, no, illegally, no, no, legally you were there first. But illegally, I don't know if they got there in there illegally. Probably not. But still, morally you were, yeah, you were first. So we lined up. Uh, they had a big opening. Had lots of the staff dressed up in Zelda characters. It was a really great atmosphere. I uh, got to know a few people in the line. Uh, became good friends. Uh, got my Nintendo Switch. So excited. Got home at about nine o'clock, uh, unboxed it, set it up, and I had uh, college that same day. So I went to college with my Nintendo Switch, started playing Zelda on the go, on the train. I was amazed with how, uh, just how good it played on the go. I was like, this is amazing. That's great. Yeah. Um, for me, cause, well, I got my Switch maybe three mi- three months after launch, just because I was kind of the, one of the people that just kind of wanted to hold back a little bit, see how it goes, see how I feel about it, and then picked it up. But since I work in game retail, I quite very much experienced the launch quite a bit, because just we had so many people coming in, we had so many pre-orders, we were selling out, we were running out of them all the time, there were people just craving for them as well. Like, it was a really big launch, and it's something that it, we hadn't really seen before, because of, obviously, like, Nintendo hadn't really released a successful console since the Wii. So that's, it's absolutely amazing. Uh, so I would say, I experienced the launch, like, myself. Obviously, I worked there. Um, but, yeah, obviously, I didn't pick it up till a while later, so I didn't experience that kind of hype of picking it up, opening it up, and, and playing a game, like, on release day. So I don't really have that same experience, but... I still quite enjoyed it, so it's pretty good. But even though you picked it up a bit later on, mm. you did pick up the launch game first, which was Legend of Zelda Breath yeah. of the Wild. Yeah, I picked uh, up... Um, what did I pick up? I think I picked up... I think I just picked up Breath of the Wild. Uh, and then I went to Mario Kart, and then when I was like craving Splatoon 2 while it was coming out, like it was just about to release, uh, and then I picked that up, and I was played that for a long time. So yeah, no, that's definitely what happened there. And with Breath of the Wild, that game was announced all the way back in 2013, I that's, believe. Dude, that's right. Yeah, because it was originally, it was, it was just called Zelda U. Like, people just referred to it as Zelda Wii U. That was just the thing. And little did people know. <laughs> Ugh. Ugh, awkward. <laughs> um, and it wasn't until 2017 they finally released it. And it was definitely worth the wait. I remember just playing this game non-stop. Yeah. I was addicted to it. I haven't been this addicted to a game in quite a long time yeah can't even think back to the last time I was maybe Smash Brothers where it's just the only thing I was playing all yeah. the time um, I love the locations of the game like just exploring was just so magical and just the fact that Link's uh, movement was just so free and yeah you could just climb anything jump anywhere they didn't feel like there was any restrictions that was my that was my favorite part of it because uh, just before I got the switch uh, I because I have PS4, so I got Horizon Zero Dawn. Because um, that, that I think that released the same day as, if I'm correct, it released March third as well. Um, so I got Horizon Zero Dawn, and I didn't like that game uh, because I was seeing all the gameplay and everything about the about Breath of the Wild, and I just felt really restricted and 
free, forced into this, like, very tight, narrow pathway that I had to follow, and I was kind of forced into this narrative and had to follow these quest lines, and the map just bombarded me with all these objectives, and I was like, I do not like this. I want to pick up... <laughs> I, I want to pick up a Switch one day because I just want to play a Switch. Um, so then I ended up um, returning my copy of... Um, uh, oh, you returned it, did you? Yeah, I did. And I put the money towards my uh, Switch lay-by. That was fun. <laughs> Which was definitely worth it. Absolutely. No, uh, screw Horizon Zero Dawn. Uh, people love that game, but I, I don't like it that much. Anyway. Fair enough. Anyway, but back to Zelda. Yes. Um... The gameplay was amazing. The story, uh, while not the most mind-boggling thing, was still extremely entertaining. Mm. I loved the voice acting, which is something that had never been done in a Zelda game apart from just grunts and like, hey! And insert um, that was, different that voice was great. clips here. It was a great Navi impression there. I loved it. Hey, listen! <laughs> See, wow, that was so good. That was. Mm. Excellent. But even the art style, it was just... Ugh, oh, I can't. Words cannot express how much I love that game. Mm. Unfortunately, when the game did originally come out, the frame rate was not the best. Yeah, and that kind of hampered the experience for me. Um, even though a lot of people will say, "Oh, frame rate resolutions, oh, whatever," it's just about the game. I th frame rates for me still have an impact. I think I think they are like really important these days, especially with just technology how it's advancing so much, and to and to see a game that's a launch title have those kinds of issues would kind of like worry you a little bit, especially about the console itself. But um, when I got it, when I got Breath of the Wild, it was very much patched. So I got to experience it like much better than what it is today. So that was actually good for me. So I quite enjoyed it. I just enjoyed it in general. Like I had a lot of fun with it. I still haven't finished it. Like I'm literally like, uh, I've, I've done all the, the Divine Beasts and I've still got to do, I, I'm trying to find all the, the photo spots. That's what I'm trying to find right now. That's where I'm at. How much have you <laughs> done? Well, so when I originally picked up the game, right. I kind of blasted through the story mode because when I get into a game yep. and I get engrossed in the story, yep. I don't really want to do the side quests straight away. Gotcha. I want to just see what happens next in the story because I'm so interested and I don't want my mind to be distracted from the story. Because if I do a bunch of side quests, I'll come back to the story so somewhat unengaged because my brain has been away from it for so long no, I've kind of forgotten. Yeah. So when I first played it, I just went through almost the whole game. Then I went to do all the um, all the little uh, picture points, gotcha. to get all the backstory. Yeah. And I got all of those. I'm like, man, yes. Now I just got to do all the shrines and all that. Get 100% this game because I'm going to do this. Uh, however, <laughs> after I finished the game, yeah. And I got all of the photos. I had noticed this problem with this my switch for a while. Oh. And I was like, okay, I'm gonna gonna return my Switch and trade it, get a new one, after I finish Zelda. And my problem with the Switch was where you'd put in a game card into your Switch. Oh, that's right. And then the game wouldn't register that it's been put in. Yeah. And you'd have to take it in and out several times for it to register. Mm. And for some reason, it'd always register 1-2 Switch, which is a terrible game. Uh, <laughs> it would always register that. So what I'd do to hack it is I'd put in 1-2 Switch take it out, and then put in Zelda, and then it would work fine. So you'd always have to catch 1-2... You'd always have to take 1-2 Switch with you at exactly. all times. That'd be great. See, that's 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 how they try to trick you into buying it, because they're like, games won't work without 1-2 Switch, man. you got to get that 1-2 Switch. So I was like, you know what? I can't live like this. I can't keep putting 1-2 Switch into my Nintendo Switch. Did you did you trade in 1-2 uh, Switch as well? Uh, no, I still have that. Um, <laughs> just anyway, in, just in case, you know, it might start to stuff up again. You may need one, two switch to save your life. You never know. So I went back to my store. I traded in, got a new one. However, this is one thing I was quite upset at Nintendo for. Oh. Uh, the fact that there was no cloud uh, saving, no um, data transfers when the Switch originally came out. So when I got my new Switch, while I only had Breath of the Wild, I had to start it all over again. That's right. Oh, no. <laughs> So, on my new playthrough, I'm about halfway through the game. Gotcha. But because I've already played through the story, I'm taking my time now. I'm making sure I do every single shrine, as many missions as I can. 
I'm still dedicated to 100%ing it, but it's going to take a while. It'll take a couple of years, <laughs> especially with the Korok yeah. seeds, because those are kind of ridiculous. But, hey, if you do the uh, the DLC that's come out recently, you'll be able to motorbike around and get your, get your Korok seeds. That'd be pretty good. Exactly. Yeah. And also, in the previous DLC, they uh, released a Korok mask, where oh, you yeah. put it on, and it tingles when you're near, uh, one, near one of the boys. Well, that's kind of cool. I like that. All right, that's cool. Excellent. Indeed. So, Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild, an amazing way to launch the Nintendo yeah. Switch. And if it, they hadn't have released it at launch, yeah. and it recently, I don't think the Switch would have been as successful as it is today. Ab- no, absolutely. That like is was a console seller for a lot of people, and especially since like it recently won Game of the Year at the Game Awards, which, honestly, like I think it deserves it. I do have a, pre- a game that I prefer that came out this year. But I think, like, I was like, yeah, this game has to win. Like, there's no way. So, like, that's like, a launch title of that one game of the year. Honestly, that's a strong launch. Like, and that tells you a lot about the people that said, oh, this is, this console doesn't have a strong launch. Like, what games that came out for Xbox and, and PlayStation that had a game that came out on the launch that one game of the year that year? Like, none of them did. Like, there's been no game console that's ever done that. Like, it's, it's great. I love it. It's good. Awesome. Indeed. So... Legend of Zelda, amazing. And then moving on later onto the Switch's mm-hmm. lifespan, uh, the next game to come out, big from Nintendo. We won't talk about Mario Kart 8 Deluxe because that was support from Wii U. Still an amazing game though. I loved uh, it, yeah. I was keen to play it. And if you had never played it on the Wii U or never owned it, then you were in for a massive treat. Yeah, exactly, because that's how I was as well. Never owned it, picked it up, loved it. Anyway, moving on, let's move on to the next game. The big sort of new IP Nintendo was trying to push for the Nintendo Switch was ARMS. That's right. Which, when they uh, revealed it in the uh, Direct, they had this weird sort of trailer at the start where this big buff guy was walking towards this little Japanese schoolgirl, and <laughs> yeah. I was a bit confused. Oh, yeah, that's right. That was kind of weird. I kind of felt uncomfortable watching that. But yeah, no, no. Yeah, absolutely. And then all of a sudden, the game was shown, and it looks so colourful, so beautiful. Kind of... Reminded me a bit of Overwatch. I know a lot of other people drew that comparison yeah. as well. No, I I kind of got yeah, I kind of got the Splatoon vibe just because it was colourful and it was Nintendo. So that's kind of what I got from it. Uh, and then before the game was uh, released, they released a little demo for the game, which I downloaded. Yeah. yeah. And I particularly wasn't too keen on it. Oh. <laughs> before the demo came out, I was extremely yeah. excited did, for the did game. Did you play it at like an event as well? I also played it at an event beforehand, which I enjoyed it at the event. Okay. But when I got to play it at home, I was sort of like, eh, I d- I'm not really enjoying this yeah, well, didn't, sort at, of thing. At the, at the event, didn't you play with Luke, though? I played it with my friend Luke. Yeah, so maybe um, that might have dwindled the kind of thing. Like you played And it, it was also there. the fact that I was playing a game before uh, launch. Oh, so that kind of just made you excited. Moment, okay, fair enough. An exclusive moment, yeah. Um, but when the demo came out, I was sort of like, eh, I'm not, I'm not really feeling it. Yeah. But I still decided to pick up the game because I wanted to support the new game. Right. I started playing it, I was like, eh, I'm still not sure. And then it wasn't until about two hours later that I was starting to really get into it. Right. I'm like, okay, yeah. I see this game now. It's sort of a game where it's it's fun if you have two people who are not very good at it. Yeah. It's fun, two people who are really good at it. That's that's especially fun. We'll get to that point later. And, and for me, but, it's not fun when you have one person that's good at it and one person that's terrible at it. But if you're just playing it by yourself, oh, you're yeah. not good at it. You're sort of like, ah, this is yeah, this, it's not that fun because you've got no one yeah, to yeah, yeah. to laugh about the how bad you guys are at it. Yeah, no, that's. But it's not until you okay. practice and understand the game's mechanics that it became a lot of fun for me. Mm, yeah, because I um, sorry, keep going. <laughs> and I was gonna say, and even though the game came out. Months and months ago, I still play it to this day, every so often. I'll just pop it in, play a few matches, and it's just so uh, so addicting, the game is. So what was you going to say, sir? Um, I was going to say that, yeah, I still haven't picked it up yet, but uh, we played it together, yeah, remember? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, and you were, like, pretty good at it, and I was pretty garbage at it. But didn't I win? I won that one game. I'm pretty sure I won one. I, 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 I pro- probably let you won. And then no, no, that's not how it yeah. went. That's not yeah, how it went. Yeah, of course it went. Yeah, it is how it went. All right, he let me win, and yeah, no, I kind of, I, I kind of liked it, but yeah, I was kind of in that kind of feeling where I was like, I feel like I wouldn't play this on my own, and is it worth a purchase? 
Because when, because I feel like whenever I would play it, I'd probably play it with a friend, and most likely that'd be someone like Scott. So, and since he's got it, I could just play it like on his console. So like, uh, I was like, ah, I might not, I might not get it, you know. So I don't know, I didn't get it. But the fact that that keeps me coming to this game is like Splatoon, which we'll talk about in a bit. Yes. They keep bringing out new content for the game, oh, okay. which is something I really enjoy. They keep bringing out new characters, new stages, new arms. Yeah. Uh, different modes. They've recently started doing like a Splatfest type mode. Okay. Where you, you choose uh, depending on two different fighters. Right. You choose which fighter. And then throughout the day, there are different um, arms which you can use. And if you use those arms, you get special advantages and uh, more points. And it's really cool. And then by the end of it, it depending on who won, it will tell you which character is more popular, which character won more fights. And it's a really good way of bringing everyone back to the game on a regular basis, which is something I think they should have done earlier on. Yeah. Because I feel the game's community is is not as big as it should be. I feel like a lot of people were such big uh, Smash Brothers fans that they're like, we want Smash Brothers. We don't want we don't want ARMS. Yeah, no, absolutely. Get that out of here. Yeah. So I feel like if you can, give ARMS another go. Mm. It is really fun. No, no since, I, no, since you've said that, like I'm actually keen to possibly at, at one point actually grab it just because like I like the Splatoon mindset just of like having constant updates, having events, like keeping people interested in the game. I think that's actually great. So I might actually probably pick it up and we could play it together. So it'd be fun. Hey, and a lot of people say that it's a waggle fest, which is not the case since you can use a pro controller. And if you do use a pro controller and you are playing against someone who is playing it of a competitive nature, the game can be a, a pretty good mind game because you're not only fighting them, you're also thinking ahead to what they're going to do next yeah. and using your maneuvering like, skills. Yeah, trying to psych him out a bit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. I can't like that. Okay. But moving on, we had Splatoon 2 come out after that. Yeah. Which, which is a game, a sequel to a new IP which was started on the Wii U, which was, in Wii U talk, was a success. Mm. But not a big success because it was on the Wii U. Yeah, obviously, yeah. And it had a lot of missed potential. I got it for the Wii U. Mm. I was a fan of it, but there was something that held me back from loving the game. Right. Do you know what and it I think, is, or do you... I think that fact was the fact that, because it was only the first game, they hadn't properly fought it through. They hadn't developed it as much as they could have. And with Splatoon 2, I think they nailed it perfectly. Mm. Yeah. No, because I, I, I played Splat the first Splatoon a little bit, um, and I did I wasn't quite fond of it, just because I, I think I just wasn't used to the, the, the motion controls, which motion controls are the best way to play as well. So I, I've learned that now. Uh, but yeah, when I first initially played it, I was a bit like, eh. And I remember watching the actual initial announcement um, of Splatoon and thinking, what is this weird game? Why why is the developer of the game so weird? I don't understand. I kind of liked it, but I kind of thought it was a bit too weird. So I wasn't too sure about it. Even though I didn't have a Wii U, I, I love watching the conferences and stuff. And so I love ha like having my opinions. And obviously when Splatoon first came out, I was a bit like, what? What is this game? But then when Splatoon 2 um, was being released for Switch, I was like absolutely keen for it because I knew how good the, the first one was. So I was really keen to pick this one up. And with Splatoon 2, they had a new marketing ploy, which was the new band Off The Hook, which uh, with the original Splatoon, we had the Squid Sisters, right, yeah. which a lot of people loved. <laughs> Myself, I wasn't the biggest fan of them. I thought the music was eh. And they were kind of dead eye, right. weren't they? They were just kind of like steady blankly. Well, they talk. Indeed, they didn't have that. They had a bit of personality, but not as much right. as the new the new kids on the block. Absolutely. Indeed, and also the fact that Splatoon Two, like every game of the Switch, because it's portable, you could take it anywhere. It just made it that more inviting and fun. Yeah. No. Absolutely. Yeah. No. I like. I. I honestly. I always tell people like while I'm working and people asking like, what games do I get for the Switch? What games do I get for the Switch? I always tell them if you like online online games and online shooters I, i'd say like splatoon is a unique take on that and it's really surprisingly good and i always recommend it to people like it's it's that good like i think i think it's a really good game like i, I like i don't play shooters like very much i play a couple uh doom um i've been playing bloody star wars Gan gamble front uh, a bit and i don't like it but i kind of like playing in star wars i'm an idiot i know um but splatoon 2 is just so unique that it's great and it's just one of the shooters it's one of my favorite shooters of all time like it's great i love it anyway indeed and with splatoon 2 one last thing the fact of the idea of the splat fest is amazing yeah because those splat fests keep me coming back every single time mm. just to 
play a little bit, put my opinion in on which team I'd prefer. Yeah. And I'm really glad they incorporated that idea into ARMS. And I feel future online Nintendo games should have the same approach. Yeah, I feel like of, I feel like all online games should have that approach, but unfortunately all, on, all other online games kind of have this kind of mundane, boring, just play online, shoot people kind of feel to it. But this has like and a... And buy our loot box. Yeah, exactly. Buy our loot boxes, buy all this stuff. But, but Splatoon um, just has this very unique uh, community kind of feel, especially with just like... Not so much like, of course, the Wii U had the 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 Miiverse, which was a little bit more like social. But this one still has that kind of uh, social interaction with the little drawings you could do in the game. I, I just think it's really cool. I like it. It's great. The the community is always good. Splatoon. Now moving on to probably the biggest surprise of this year. Oh yes, was Mario and Rabbids. Now this game had was leaked earlier on in this year. Oh, I didn't even know that. <laughs> And at first, I didn't believe it. I was like, eh, this, it's a bit of a stretch. I don't think they're going to do that. Right. And then it was talked about again. This is happening, guys. Don't, this is not a fake leak. This is actually happening. Yep. And I was like, okay, this is kind of kind of weird. Eh. And then big stuff in regards to it leaked, such as in uh, promotional art and stuff like that. Mm. And it was like confirmed that, yep, this is going to be happening. And a lot of people were really... Not happy with it. Yeah, because people are like, Rabbids are the minions of the gaming industry, and people just don't really like them very much. But, but... And while I was... Yeah. Uh, a bit, even though I was a massive fan of Rabbids back in the day, like, the uh, TV party game was a lot of fun mm-hmm. uh, on the Nintendo Wii. Even though I was a fan of that, I was still pretty skeptical of this game. Yeah. And even the game's director said after the game's launch that he thought he'd made a big failure in making this game because... What? Just because it had been leaked, the idea of Mario and Rabbids together. Okay. And everyone hated the idea of that without actually knowing what the game was. Yeah, okay. He saw this hate and took it really personally and thought that this is going to be a failure. Oh, that's And it wasn't uh, until Grant Kirkhope, the composer of the game, he was like, they've not seen the game yet. They don't know anything about it. Oh, he's, isn't he the, the composer for, for Banjo? Indeed he is. Yeah. He also did uh, yes. Mario and Rabbids as well. Ooh, okay, I didn't know that. And then they showed off at E3. And they it was it was a, it was a shame that it wasn't a surprise because it had been leaked. Yeah. Oh well I was before, I was surprised which... by it though. I didn't know it was coming out, so I was surprised and I thought it was weird. Um and like I I thought the um the the the, the French guy that like like addressed it, was that the actual developer that was like upset, as you said? Uh, no, 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 no. Okay. Uh, he was in the stage. You could see him crying uh, at one point because oh, okay. he's so proud of oh, his, okay. uh, his work. Yeah. But they showed off at E3 and I was su- so surprised of how good it looked. Yeah, it looks like surprisingly good. Like it's not the kind of game that I would usually play, but I've actually bought it. So that's kind of like a, a good thing there. And the game came out, got very good reviews. So I picked it up. I uh, had a lot of fun with it. But for some reason, it's not a game that I play a lot. It's sort of a game that I go back to every once in yeah. a while. I do a couple of stages. I put it away again. Bring it back. It's that sort of experience yeah. for me. Uh, how about you? Um, well, I mean, I was going to ask you just then. Are these kinds of games your kind of thing, though? Like a turn-based, uh, strategic kind of things your kind of game, though? Uh, not really. I'm not really yeah. into strategy sort but of that, games. That's, but that's the thing. I think that shows that the game is actually good. Because it's even though you're not into those kinds of games, you're still bringing yourself back to it. Because I'm not into those sorts of games either. Like these kind of like chess style, XCOM style strategic things. I don't really enjoy them. But I really enjoy playing Mario and Rabbids. And I'm the kind of the same boat as you. I pick it up every so often. Um, and I play it every like a little bit. Um, but the fact that it does bring me back to it. And the fact that I haven't like like traded it back in or t- taken it back in or whatever. Shows that it's still good despite it not being always for me. But I still pick it up and play it. So that's kind of a good thing there. Indeed. Now, with Nintendo Switch, yeah. compared to the Wii U, we've had very, very good third-party support. Mm. We've had a lot of games come to it. A lot of really good ports. Yes. Some t- terrible ports, such as the latest WWE game. And uh, which... and Rhyme. <laughs> and Rhyme. If you look at those games, oh boy, the WWE game goes to about 20 FPS. Oh, that's nothing 15. compared to Rhyme. Rhyme goes to a whole five. <laughs> But putting those to the side, right. we've had a lot of good third-party oh, games. Absolutely, um, yeah. Some of my favorites, of course, is Sonic Mania, mm-hmm. which is 
a sort of an indie kind of game because it's produced yeah. by an indie sort of team. Christian Whitehead, who is a massive fan of uh, Sega and Sonic, mm. he uh, contacted Sega a couple of years ago uh, and sort of gave him the idea of a Sonic iOS port, which was developed for iOS and not just an emulated version of it. And they agreed to it and they released Sonic CD uh, for iOS and then for PC, like running on his engine, like remastered. And then after that opportunity, they let him do a remaster of Sonic 1 and 2 for iOS. And then everyone was like, man, it'd be great if this guy could actually like, make a Sonic game. And then it actually happened that's in actually Sonic really, Mania. Yeah. No, I didn't really hear that whole backstory. So that's actually kind of cool. Yeah, I like that. And the the game's musician is also a fan. He's done like remixes of Sonic oh, songs music, like yeah, the in the really past. Good. So he got to do an official Sonic game. Uh, and just all the, all the developers of the games are fans. And they had a massive passion for Sonic, which you can see when you're playing the game. It's one of the first official fan games, which... I would, I would actually argue as well that Mario and Rabbids is also kind of a fan game as well. It's made by Ubisoft, but it's a Mario game. So we've had two kind of games not developed by the actual developers of the game that would usually be the developers of the game, but developed by other developers, and they're both... That was a mouthful. Yes, but still, <laughs> I, it made my point, and they're both great games that feel like they belong on the Switch, and it's great. I think it's awesome. Indeed, and I hope... Sonic Mania 2 becomes a thing because that would be amazing. Uh, I'd like to see them uh, sort of move away from using uh, classic stages and just do fully original stages. That would be really cool. Mm. Uh, but yeah, Sonic Mania, if you haven't played it, pick it up, regardless if it's on the Switch, PC, Xbox, PS4. Just play the game. It's really good. Yeah. But talk, uh, talking more about the... third-party games, though. I'm going to keep yes. talking about third-party games. Um, the fact that they got games like Doom to be on the Switch is like something I didn't think would actually ever happen. Like my initial reaction to seeing Doom, I was kind of in shock and I didn't know that would ever happen and it happened and I was kind of like, how is that possible? But it was possible and it happened. And like even of course, like you make the joke that the Skyrim's on every single console ever, but the fact that it's on Switch is kind of this really new way to play it. And obviously you haven't played Skyrim before, so you're kind of this newcomer that's never had the chance to play it that's now getting an opportunity. So like the third party supports getting people that are usually loyal Nintendo fans or people that usually buy Nintendo games or only buy games on Nintendo consoles a chance to play games that are outside of that kind of market that they usually have, which are these sort of specific games and kind of feeling closed off from the rest of the gaming world. They feel more open, that they're getting more attention from other developers which is great i think it's awesome so like games like yeah doom and skyrim i think are amazing like the fact they actually exist on the console i think it's great um and there's other games as well that i can't really recall wolfenstein 2 that's gonna be great i think you've played that right uh i own it i'm yet to play it <laughs> okay well there we go like there's just lots there's lots is there anything else you were going to talk about with this uh skyrim so, as uh, Jimmy yes. said, that was a game that I've never played before. I was never really interested in it either. Uh, I had played it a little bit around Friends House mm. on PS3, right. and I just couldn't really get into it. I was sort of like, eh, I don't really, don't really see the appeal. Yeah. But then, because it's Nintendo Switch, and it was such a big game, such like a raved game, like, you know what? I'll give it a shot. <laughs> and I picked up the game, yeah. and I was surprised by how much... I loved it. Right. Like, even after Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild, which had amazing free roaming, you had no limitations, mm. stuff like that. Even though Skyrim is definitely... You don't have the same kind of movement. Yeah, but I think it's, I in, think it's very much a different game because you have a lot more... I wouldn't say it's fully RPG. It doesn't go as deep as a lot of other games, but the whole talking to people and kind of getting immersed and building your own character as opposed to, you know, Breath of the Wild. You're Link. You have to be Link. This you can be anyone. I think that's a good appeal of it. But yeah, keep going. Uh, and the fact that it's also portable and yeah. I can take it on the go. Absolutely. That also got me very keen on it yeah. instead of just having to sit down in one place and just walk around. I can now move anywhere in the house, maybe walk to a new town, put it away for a bit, come back do a quest and that's the thing I love about the Switch is that I don't have to sit down for hours and just play a game accessibility it's just... great like you don't feel like okay want to play a game alright I'm going to sit down I guess this is, this is where it goes but you can just kind of pick it up and just play like it's great it's awesome EA sort of have a rough history with Nintendo with the Wii U mm. they at first they had some good third party support we had Mass Effect 3 come out on the Wii U yep. we had FIFA come out on the Wii U 
And then after that, there was just nothing. Right. And also, uh, Need for Speed Most Wanted also came out on the Wii U. Yeah. Um, so with the Switch, the release has happened. So far, they've only bought out FIFA. We'll have to wait and see uh, what else they have in store. Mm. But it was a pretty good port to the Switch. Yeah. Uh, it's had a custom-built engine, which I thought was very good of them to actually put effort into it. And I was really looking forward to picking up this game. I was like, yes, this looks like such a good port. EA, you've done good for once. But then there was this one big issue with the game, which decided to put me off from purchasing it. What was that? And that was the fact that you can't do online with your friends. What? FIFA for Switch, you can do online. You can do local. You can do uh, wireless. But you can't do online with your friends for some reason. And I don't know if that's a issue which should be blamed on EA or on Nintendo's yeah. online infrastructure. Yeah, I, like I, ho- I'd hope maybe that if it might be on Nintendo's part, like especially with their weird setup with how you add friends and how you do that and all that sort of thing. So I like to say I hope it's Nintendo because I kind of hope that EA aren't a bunch of dirtbags. Wait, never mind. No, EA. Okay, never mind. Yeah, it's probably EA. Never mind. <laughs> but one game that did get online right is Rocket League. Oh. Now, this oh. game, I've been a fan of for many years. Yeah. I've loved it. I have it on PC. I got I've into it recently, yeah. Heaps of hours into it. And when the Switch was first announced, one of the fir- one of the dream games I was hoping for was Rocket League. Yeah. Because I just thought the ability to take Rocket League on the go, do it wireless with like friends at a party or something like that, that would be so fun. And then during E3 this year, they announced it, yeah. and I was so happy. It was just one, yeah. It's just one of those games that I was like, I'm just happy that it's on there. Like I was like, yeah, Rocket League, yeah, I'll buy that. Like I was like, there was no kind of like me thinking about it. Like, hmm, okay, oh that looks pretty good. Like it was just like Rocket League. Yes, that's that's perfect. I want it. Ah, oh, it was good. Nut no, definitely. Um, and it was also a really good port as well. Yeah, to no. the Switch. There are some resolution sort of issues. But uh, we've been told that those will be patched uh, patched out, bringing it up to a higher resolution, yeah. making it just a more enjoyable experience. Nice. But the experience is already super fun no, I don't, as a I base don't, game. I, I didn't really mind about the resolution because the frame rate's solid, isn't it? And that's kind of really all that matters. I mean, obviously, fra- uh, sorry, uh, quality does matter, especially with a lot of the distance and seeing things in the background quite a bit. Um, it does matter, but I, it hasn't really affected my experience too much, so I... I still like it. It's still, my, it's still, it's still my, one of my faves. And coming to near the end of the year, mm-hmm. we had two more big games coming out oh, from Nintendo. Oh. We're going to go on to the most recent one before finishing off uh, with probably your favourite game of this year. Oh, don't, uh, don't, so, don't spoil it. Oh, okay, so we're doing, okay, we're doing the other one first. Okay, cool. I'm keen for this. <laughs> so we had Xenoblade Chronicles 2 come out. Yeah, now, yeah, earlier yeah. this year, I played Xenoblade for the Nintendo Wii. Mm. Uh, I absolutely loved the game. Mm. I had sort of played through a lot of the game, right. and I was loving it. I got about halfway through the game, and then I stopped playing it because I got really busy with college, had lots of work I had to do, so I was like, okay, put this aside for a while, I'll come back to it eventually. Hmm. And then I had a week off, and I looked at the game, and I was like, <laughs> like I'm, f- I'm finishing you come, this week. Come here, daddy. And he just finished it off. Uh, and I had, I had a week off. So I was like, I'm finishing it this week. And then I just sort of Googled. I was like, so how far into the game am I? Oh. I was about halfway through the game. Excellent. But it was like I the had end a, of the week. I had about 50 hours more game to go. At the end of the week, though? Was that at the very end of the week? Like, you realized you had 50 more no, hours? No, at the, at the start of the week. Oh, that's good. Okay, I, I was going to say. And I said to myself, I'm finishing this game. Okay. And the story of the game is amazing. I only had a few little niggles of the game where the, some of the bosses being particularly difficult. One boss I was stuck on for about two hours and almost gave up, oh but I persisted yeah. and I did it. And then I got to the final boss, which was also extremely difficult. So even though I hate grinding, I made myself grind up certain a few levels. Mm. And then the final boss was pretty easy. <laughs> Finished the game about 30 minutes before midnight of the day I go back to college. Oh, so I finished funny. it in that week. <laughs> And it's, even though I only played it this year, it's definitely my top time, uh, top five video games of all time. Because oh, wow. I just love it that much. Okay, cool. So when Xenoblade Chronicles 2 yeah. was coming out, it had a lot of expectations mm. for me. Uh, because I was sort of like, how is this going to beat my pal Shulk? Mm. 
I don't know if I'll really be feeling this. And I feel like, yeah, <laughs> I feel like a lot of, like, because you only played it that year. Like, imagine the people that had to wait, like, how many years? Like, five, over five, ten years or whatever it may have been. Like, just imagine that those people's expectations being, like, much higher than yours probably as well. Like, that's kind of insane. But, yeah. And then the game came out. Uh, I picked up the collector's edition because, for some reason, I collect the collector's edition for every single game <laughs> for the Switch. I've got one for uh, Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild. Right. I've got one for Mario and Rabbids. I've got one for Hi uh, Fire Emblem Warriors, a game which I haven't actually played that much of because I'm not actually that into the Fire Emblem series. Like, I you just, just got of... the collectors for, for some reason. Yeah, I need to... Because Fire Emblem Warriors, going off track for a little bit, mm. because it's kind of a fan service game because it's like hey, you know all these characters from fire emblem you'll love oh, this game oh yeah 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 yeah. oh yeah it's the war oh yeah because it's the, the dynasty warrior one yeah yeah yeah. i got gotcha. you because because of that i don't really connect to many of the you characters like, apart from the ones that are in smash brothers <laughs> yeah like, oh, i played you in smash brothers um because of that i've decided that i'm gonna put that game on hold for a bit mm -hmm. play a fire emblem game or two and then come back to it. And then you'll be like, the oh my god, it's my fave. Oh my god, it's this person I know. Yeah, okay, fair enough. So back onto Xenoblade. I got <laughs> the collector's edition for that. I started playing it, and I'm not sure if it will be as good as the first game, because I'm still only at the start of the game. Right. But the plot has intrigued me. Mm -hmm. The idea of this Elysium sort of heaven world. Yeah. The idea of the world crumbling apart, mm -hmm. and them trying to get to this Elysium before the world not only falls apart but before the world falls into war because of the world falling apart <laughs> i think there's one main thing you have to worry about which is the falling apart bit the war yeah. bit's kind of uh, like a side thing <laughs> exactly and that the plot sort of intrigues me so i'm yeah. gonna keep going with the game all right i'm gonna see where the story takes me uh i, I really like the voice acting mm. even though it's pretty cringy i just love the british accents i just love just the comedy of it there are some really weird parts in that game but Jimmy, you weren't as impressed. Yeah, no, I, well, okay, look, I played about two hours of it. It's on my YouTube channel as well, if you want to have a look. We live-streamed it, me and Scott did. Um, and I, look, it's not the kind of game that I like, though. Uh, I don't really, like, I like RPGs. I just don't think I like this kind of RPG, especially, you know, obviously it's a JRPG. Uh, there's a lot, of, as you said, with the first game, you you got halfway through the game and still had 50 hours. So there's 100 hours of gameplay, possibly plus more, depending on how much you want to do of it. Um, and that's too much time. I can't put that much time into games, usually. Like, it's just like, because obviously I had to pick them up here and there, but those games you kind of have to invest, like, be long sessions into, which I'm not too into. Um, so I played the two hours... Um, and obviously in those two hours, I, I didn't experience the whole vast majority of the game, but the combat was the thing that I didn't really like at all. It was just kind of like, sit there, wait for a thing to charge up, press a button, and just sit there and wait for it, and it takes too long. And there was an instance that at the end of my thing, I was up against like a, like a one of the first bosses you face in it. Uh, I guess, put it on quotes, I guess, boss. I don't, I don't know if it's a, it's a huge boss or anything like that. Uh, and I just kind of struggled with it just because I was in this kind of loop where uh, I was losing health faster than I could actually gain health. I was losing health and then I had to wait for a, uh, to get a hook shot to actually get the health. But the, the amount of health I lost in the meantime of waiting to get that hook shot was more health than I would actually gain from the health potion. So I ended up being in this loop of just slowly dying and I just never got around to, to beating the boss until like four or five tries and I just kind of didn't enjoy it. it was kind of tedious it's not my kind of thing so I was like yeah for everyone buy this one like because I was kind of intrigued I was like I might give it a go um and luckily Scott came around we had a go at it and I was like okay I this is not my kind of game uh it's unfortunate because I know a lot of people love it but it's just not for me I don't think I'm into these kinds of huge massive games that you have to invest a lot of time into and have to because um, I, I saw people talking about it online and saying like, oh, you know, wait, play at least play it for about 40 hours and that's when it starts getting a lot better. I'm like, I'm not going to invest 40 hours for it to get a little bit better, hypothetically. Like, I, like I feel like games need to at least hook you within at least maybe two to five hours of playing it before you actually 
and that's where you should actually have a solidified grasp of what the game is going to be and whether you're going to enjoy it or not. Otherwise, you're just wasting your time. So with that one, within two hours that I played it, didn't like it. Got did the bit of exploration, talking to NPCs, doing some of the combat. Didn't like it. So I was like, no, nah, not going to buy this one. But if people like it, cool, fair enough. <laughs> A game you were into though. Oh, Super Mario Odyssey. Oh boy. Okay, I am a Mario sixty four boy. <laughs> That's the game that I kind of played over and over and over and over again. I didn't. Um, at one point, I didn't know how to save because I was a dumb little little kid. So I kind of just played the beginning uh, bomb on battlefield like over and over and over again. Um, but until I obviously figured out, oh yeah, I can save the game, and I ended up, um, I, I actually never finished Mario uh, 64 just because I was a kid and just kind of explored lots. I, I think my, I maxed it about 89 stars in that. Anyway, so I was a big Mario 64 kid. So I was like, I am beyond keen, but I hadn't played a Mario game in a long time. Obviously, I skipped out on the Wii U, didn't play a lot of Wii, I played some games on the Wii, um, but I hadn't played Mario in a long, long time. Um, so I was kind of skeptical. I was like, what kind of game is this going to be? Am I still going to like Mario? I don't know. But then more trailers started to come out, and I was like, yeah, no, nah, I'm, I'm keen. I, I want to get this game. So got it, and I have to say, because I, I got it day one. It's, it's one, of the, one of the few games that I actually got day one. Uh, and it's the best game of the year. Like, hands down, my... Well, that's obviously uh, subjective, but... <laughs> It's my favorite game of the year. That, that's all I have to say. It's great. I love it. I love the simplicity of the control scheme and that you only use three buttons in the game, but it allows you to do so much and you have like such a big toolbox of moves in the game that it's just amazing. So that's, it's just great. I love it. Anyway, what do you think, Scott? What do you think? I have a lot of similar opinions yes. to you where I think the game is really, really good. Uh, when they first showed off their game, mm. they showed off this New York City landscape. Oh, you were, you were getting some Sonic 06 vibes, weren't you? I was... No, not at first. At first, actually, I thought this was Bayonetta. That was my first impression. Oh, really? Especially yeah, with the big... Donkey Kong signs? I thought... Because I, I thought it was going to be like a weird Donkey Kong. I never... I did, never noticed it at oh, first. Because I, I was just so <laughs> shocked by this New York sort of... Yeah, no. Well, I, I, like, I saw the New Donk City in the background. I was like, is it Donkey Kong? <laughs> and then Mario showed up. Yeah. And then that's when I was like, Sonic? What? It's kind of... So Sonic in the will Mario in the real world? Yeah. And then, so that trailer stood out for me. And I was like, whoa, I can't wait to see more about this game. Mm. Then the next trailer came out. Mm. And then yes. the possession. And I was like, yes. what? That was that was the point where I was like, this is something, this is something else. <laughs> and then the game came out. Mm. And it was amazing. Yeah, I, I just think it's so solid. I just think it's great. Like, it's one of the... It's one of the best games I've played in a long time. Like I, I've played a, like a couple of games so like over the course of the year, but like, dude, that's it's it. The, oof, oh, oof. <laughs> Mario, yeah, Mario Odyssey is just yeah, it's my it's my baby. I love it. It's my favorite. I want to replay it again. I kind of want to play it on YouTube though, as well. I kind of want to replay it. I oh. I love maybe it. in the future for this channel, maybe. <sighs> oh, do I love this channel enough? Oh, maybe. I don't know. We'll see. Um, but I do have to say, in my personal opinion, I still prefer Super Mario Galaxy over Odyssey. Fair enough. I don't. I think it's because of the idea of just this galaxy world. Galaxy world. Yeah, sure. Why not? Uh, Three sixty planets. It was just so creative, and then nothing like that sort of before. To that sort of extent. Yeah. But Odyssey's still an amazing game. Nah, and two amazing games for the Switch. And we're not even a year in. Like, literally, yeah. I think... How many... Yeah, like the... We're only nine months in. Yeah, no, and the, the Game of the Year awards as well. Have Mario and... Um, and Zelda. That's the, I've got the name for a second. And Zelda as contenders. And, I, and when that was those were revealed i was like i'm gonna pick mario odyssey but i was like i know that zelda's gonna win though because i know zelda has a bigger fan base and a lot of people would just kind of agree that it was just kind of this otherworldly experience um but i think i have this attachment to to mario 64 i wasn't uh, an ocarina of time kid i 
got confused with that game and got lost with it so i don't have a lot of kind of attachment to zelda as much as i do to mario so that might have, that may have swayed me but i kind of like 3d platformers more than open world um exploration rpg-ish games so that might have been a thing too so i don't know mario is just the best game that's just hands down what would actually yeah that's a good thing to say as well what would you say is the best game for the nintendo switch I'd, I'd say for the Switch, even if it is your overall best game of, of the year as well, it's totally... You mentioned that as well. Go for it. Well, for me, for the Nintendo Switch, yeah. my favourite games... I don't really have a favourite game. Ooh. I have favourite games of different genres. Okay. Because I enjoyed so many games, mm. but each of the games I enjoyed are so different. Yeah, no, absolutely. That's kind of how I feel as well, but I was... Yeah, obviously, I'm... I'm, I'm, <laughs> I'm so, biased. for example... <laughs> My favorite, my favorite mm. uh, adventure game, of course, was Legend of Zelda. Yes. My favorite platformer game was d- debatable between Sonic Mania and Super Mario uh, Odyssey. But I think again, those games are very different. Still, like ones are three D, ones are two D. Like <laughs> my favorite fighting game, Arms. Yes. My favorite shooting game, Splatoon Two. Duh. There's just so many great games that came out this year. Yes. Yeah. It's hard for me to choose just one. Absolutely. <laughs> so, 2017 is coming to an end. We haven't got much time left. Mm. We'll be coming into 2018 soon. A lot of interesting stuff in store. Stay tuned for a discussion on that. But overall, Jimmy, how would you say 2017 was for Nintendo? I think it... Well, it's very clear that it's a very good year. We've seen how many years has Nintendo not done that well, apart from maybe the 3DS. Uh, A long time. And this is, like, the big comeback. Like, I think the sales for the Switch have just passed 10 million in the first, what, nine months? Which is amazing. Mm -hmm. Um, As compared to a lot of other consoles, I think it's past Xbox One. I think it's just below PS4. Uh, it's obviously surpassed Wii U. It's it's doing. I think how many how many did Wii U sell in its entirety? Like probably not even. Oh, uh, it's it sold about 13, 14 million. Oh my god! And we're god. At ten million already. <laughs> so I would say they did really good, uh, especially with my opinion. Especially because, uh, like I'd say, my first favorite game Mario Odyssey. Second favorite, I'd say probably Zelda. Like I know that's generic, and then I have some other favorite games that are some indies and stuff like that but that's another topic for another time those are on other consoles so i'm not gonna talk about those but like just the fact that this game has so many games that i would say is just the games i had the most fun with like splatoon 2 there's so many and it's just that that's kind of what it's about for me and i I just kind of really love it i don't know there are some 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 flaws and some issues that i kind of feel like hopefully can be addressed a little bit like that and some concerns i have with seeing in the first year there's already games that are having you know uh, quality issues and and frame rate issues and all this kind of stuff and it kind of worries like how long is this going to last until you get to the point where this is a severely underpowered console like i know power isn't everything but wasn't nintendo's old saying like power something something or other i don't know but still now you're playing with power exactly but i, I know that means something else but it like it kind of has some worries, especially at, like, and I think the the social interaction on it, the friend system needs to be co- completely overhauled. I think the UI in the in the console it has no real uniqueness, and I hope maybe they make some changes or they make get backgrounds and stuff like that. Um, but usually that's a lot of hardware and and visual things. Apart from that, just the games have been great, and that that's what I think is the is the best part of it. And yeah, no, it's a, it's the console I play the most. It's great. I love it. Anyway, what do you think? So yeah, in my opinion, uh, with the Nintendo Switch, they've completely rebranded themselves as a company Nintendo have. With the Wii U, they had terrible marketing, terrible advertising, Absolutely. trying to showcase their message of what the Wii U was about. Because everyone was confused as to what it was, especially with, I, I think, like, sorry to cut you off, but that was an issue as well. Wii U, like, what is the difference between Wii and Wii U? I get that question still, like, to this day. And I get the question about 2DS, 3DS, and DS. People don't understand how it works. And that's a problem with Nintendo before. But now they get it. It's great. I love that they get it now. Um, but with the Switch, they've got it. Yeah. And I hope that they carry this wave of just amazing marketing, being able to 
broadcast a clear, concise message for what the Switch is about. Yeah, and what it is. So as yeah. a company, Nintendo have done a really good year this year. They have. And I feel like their confidence as a company has grown to a point where we're going to see more more risks, I feel, with the Switch. Because they have the opportunity to take those risks and try bigger, better things. But, on a personal level, the Nintendo Switch, well, an amazing console, I've had quite a few oh, worries have, and yeah. problems about. Like I said earlier, I had the problem with the Nintendo Switch itself, having to replace that. You had issues with your Pro Controllers too. I've had issues with Pro Controllers, which I've had to get those Did replaced. you Joy-Con issues as well? I had the left Joy-Con issue, which I had to get replaced. Yeah. Uh, in total, I've had to do about six replacements. Jeez, I haven't had to do that much. Like, the only like kind of physical issue I've had is that my my right Joy-Con, the the joystick is a little bit sticky in, in parts, but it's kind of loosened up now. That's the only issue that I've had, ever had with it. And maybe a little bit of warping of the screen, but now it's kind of fixed itself up a bit. So yeah, I haven't had any of those kinds of issues. So it's a bit of a worry, but as I was a day one purchaser, yeah, fair it's, enough. <laughs> it's kind of a, a habit for day one purchases to always yeah, sort of that, get. That's, that's with all consoles usually. There's always some issues and there's always some hardware issues and defects and defectives as well. Like that's just kind of a given usually. And especially with such a different console like the Switch, it's obviously going to be something that Nintendo needs to kind of get an even footing with and try and figure out how, how what's the best way, best way to... Uh, to build these and get these to actually be a, a functioning console like, con- like consistently. So that's something that they need to get their even footing on. There's still issues that arise every now and then, but they're doing good. They're doing better. As the Switch itself, I've loved its first year. We, we haven't even finished its first year. Yeah. I've loved the schedule of games that have come out because when the Wii U first surgery came out, there was a bunch of games at launch, heaps. And then after the launch, there was about a four-month period of basically no, no mm. games at all. But with the Switch and its launch, there's been like small games, not small games, but like a small amount of games coming out each month to have a steady flow. And we're at that point now where that steady flow has made a impressive big library of games already. It's great. I love it. <laughs> it's really great. And I can't wait to see what comes up next for the Switch. But... If you made it this far into this discussion, thank you very, very, very much for listening. We hope you enjoyed. Be sure to leave your thoughts on Nintendo's 2017 in the comments below. I'd love to hear what you have to say. If positive, negative, go ahead. And we shall see you all in the next discussion. Thank you very much. Me and Jimmy, signing out. See you later. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye.